Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another BJ and Co. Rail Nation video. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about city leveling. Um, so you've got the intro, you know basics how the game works, you know what you should be prioritizing in era one. So now let's get your team up to number one. We want you to be part of the, one of the biggest cities in the game. So how do you go about doing that? First off, the important thing to know, leveling at city takes coordination. You need lots of players working together to benefit the city in order to pull ahead. So general overview, if we open the city here, there are four required goods for the city, three when you first start, but as soon as a fourth one fills in, it stays four for the rest of the game. And the general rule of thumb is you want this red bar to fill up so that once it um, consumes at the end of its 15 minute cycle, you can see a little counter down at the bottom here that it doesn't drop below this stock line with for me is at 4,690 tons each level that you go through as you level up that will get a higher and higher number the consumption amounts vary it all depends on the good and how many connected people in your city are connected to that good tons of variables so there's no easy way to compute it but basically you just want to keep pushing this bar up which means hauling these four goods to the city Seems pretty simple, right? You just haul a bunch of them. Well, there's many things to take into account. Um, the goods themselves are all hauled from a different industry, right? So we've got all these industries around on the map. And now some of them are easy. You know, you get a coal mine, you can just haul to, from the coal mine back. Now, if we open this coal mine, you'll notice here that there is a capacity. So it produces 4,230 4, tons per hour. And as you level, you can see it's leveling here. This number will go up and up, which basically means more people can haul from it without the wait times going up. That is kind of the load utilization right now. So we're, we're hauling a little over 2,000 tons an hour from this facility right now to our city. Or from this facility to other facilities as well too, right? It's just how many tons are being pulled out. So basically our load utilization is then affecting what our wait time is. So you can see in here, this little pop-up here, the normal wait time is a minute 30, load utilization is below 100%, so it's going down. Investments, if you invest money into industries, the wait time goes down. And then if your association that you're part of has more than 50% of the total investments, which we can see in investments here under association, you get a 50% reduction in wait time. So all sorts of factors you need, you know, you want your association to have majority if that's the good that you're hauling in order to haul at lower wait times. You want to invest personally to be able to decrease your wait time. Um, and you want to keep the wait times down. Those are kind of the main ways to keep the wait times down. As more people haul, it's always just going to go up. There's no way to stop that because it's based on the util load utilization. However, you also want to keep the industry growing. So as the industry grows, the load utilization will go down if the same number of people are hauling. So basically invest. That is the most important thing. But you need to play nice because, you know, if you look in the big scheme of things, we'll look at boys right now in the stats. In our city, there is 59 people connected and hauling to our city. That's a lot of players. Let's look at my association. Oh, there's only eight of us in here. So you need to work together, right? What a lot of different cities do it really depends there's many different ways of thinking of doing this it all depends how everybody in your city want works together talk in the city forum see how you want to do it a perfect way is you get four strong associations um each one looks after a different required good and they hold majority in that one so for ours um you can see i am in rhino elite 2 which we are holding majority in iron just ironworks so we are looking after just hauling the iron that's our association. If you look in this list here, all the top five are from our association, top six actually, and then some others are helping. If we look at cattle, oh, cattle looks like it's Rhino Elite, Rhino Logistics, one of the two. But you can see here, everybody from that association is hauling cattle, they hold majority in it. Iron Ore, that's another association. They're all hauling it, they have majority in it. Boards, that's all of the ninjas, right? Well, besides one. <laughs> Go, Michelle. Um, right, so they hold majority. If we look down here, they hold majority in boards. So <coughs> play nice. Divide up the resource groups. Focus your efforts. 
That way, one team's investing in it, you're not breaking majority. The worst thing you can do in this game is fight over investments, right? If you be like, well, I'm hauling a bunch, so I want my association to have majority in this one, so I'm gonna take it, but there's six people from another association hauling it and you take majority from them, you actually slow down how many tons per hour you're delivering to the city to the point where your tendency might start going down. So play nice, that's the important thing. Now, one other thing, I kind of showed you the coal station because that's an easy one. You just haul stuff from it. But as you get an advance on, each industry requires, um, has their own required goods down the line. So here, if we're looking at the ironworks, it's got a required goods of iron ore and coal as well from it. So those also affect the waiting time. If we look in here at the waiting time, you can see that the stock, there's now a positive on the stock of a minute and five. And that's because these two bars aren't filled. So as these bars go down, your wait time goes up. So you wanna keep these bars as filled as possible. And what that brings us to is integration. Now, integration is very interesting concept because it rewards you for re delivering these required goods to the city or to each industry because sure you know if i wanted to haul iron i could haul iron straight from the city or from the ironworks to boys sure easy enough this wait time is going to shoot up right your load utilization will go up because you're hauling more tons per hour right off the bat um which means your wait time will go up but your stocks will start diminishing and as soon as these start diminishing, your wait time is going to skyrocket, right? Like we're already at a minute and we've got one full and one half full. If these are at zero, that might add four minutes to our wait times, which is huge, right? That's going to delay you so much in leveling the city. So you want to do what's called integration routes. And the game kind of supports you in that. If you mouse over this little chain link, as an association, as you deliver things and take things from each of these um, industries that have required goods, you get bonuses to the money you make and to your wait time. So you can see here on the left, my association delivered 7,700 tons of coal. So currently we get, for each ton of coal we deliver, we get a bonus 15 bucks. Beautiful. 360 iron ore, we get a bonus 66 bucks for each one of those we deliver. That's huge. Iron itself, you can see we're getting a two second wait time reduction. Not much, but this is where the interesting thing comes in the bonuses you get are based on what the other tons delivered are so right now we've been hauling more iron away than we've been delivering stuff to it that's why the wait time's so low if say coal and iron ore were both at about ten thousand, and iron itself was at nine our wait time might be decreased by like 30 40 seconds so that's an easy way that you can get the wait times down yes it does take a little bit of time up front to set people up that might be just hauling coal or iron ore to your industry or you know have one running that way that sort of thing and the money goes up the bigger the difference is between the like the iron ore number of 360 and 927 on iron itself that's why the price is up so high because it's an incentive to deliver more iron ore to the facility to try to balance everything out so that's the basics of integration there you want to keep the numbers on the left higher right that'll keep your wait time down help everybody in your association have a lower wait time so it's definitely worth doing and so to do that the easiest way is set up integrated routes on your trains. So I'm just gonna go to my one Falcon here and look at the schedule. So I'm delivering coal to ironworks to city, right? So keep it up so that you're delivering and you're receiving, delivering, receiving. Don't just do iron straight, iron straight. That's not the way to do it. You're just gonna hurt everybody in your city. Those long wait times are a pain. Um, another interesting thing, like you'll notice here, my one swallow here, I am just using it to supply iron ore back and forth. And there's easy ways to do it. Like if you can dive into all the calculations, I love playing with numbers. So depending on the situation, the wait times at the industries, sometimes it might be more beneficial instead of running all your trains on integration. So coal to ironworks to the city. Maybe I have one train running coal to iron and two trains running iron to city. And I would still be delivering more, depending on the wait time at coal, more coal to the ironworks than I'm pulling away with the iron itself. Um, but that is only if you wanna spend a lot of time calculating and making sure that you're doing it correctly. Because in the end, if you're hauling more iron away or of the kind of end good, then you're delivering to it, you're just hurting everybody. So don't 
make sure you calculate it, you see what it's like, and that you are delivering more. Don't just jump into that. I spend a lot of time figuring that stuff out to know when it's best to do it, when it's not. And it's usually when your integration resources have a low wait time. If they have a high wait time, just run the full integration route. That's the easiest thing to do. That's the way to stay out of trouble. Run integration. So that is the basics of it, guys, right? You want to get these numbers up. In order to do that, you need to run it to the city. In order to do that best, anything that has required goods in the industry, make sure you're running integration. And pay attention. Like, looking at the numbers here for the integrate uh, of course i'm not on the integration stuff right now for the integration stuff here i would really th i'm actually going to be moving some of my trains so that i'm not hauling as much coal i'm hauling more iron ore in hopes of bringing down our total wait time on iron but you can also see the gap slowly increasing and our wait time is going down or going up on wire the negative number is going down if that makes sense all that fun jazz so integration 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 and don't fight. Play nice with all your teams. Get to know everybody in the city and work together. That is the only way that you can do well in this game. Um, a perfect example here, we have four associations, the ninjas and a ton of rhinos that we talk all the time and set up resource groups. You'll notice here we have a distribution list. Every level we set new distribution, who's on what, and we try not to rotate it, it too much, right? You can also help some supporter associations. You'll notice here we have kind of a fifth association that's helping out and they help wherever is needed. One thing you can also do with those supporter associations or if your association's lagging and other people are helping. If you are a chair or deputy of a association, you have the capabilities of setting people as friendly associations. Any association you set friendly and you can only set one at a time, they'll receive a 25% waiting time bonus in if we own the majority in industries. So right now, Rhino Elite, we are getting the 50% bonus, but they're getting a 25% bonus in these two factories because we've set them friendly. So pay attention to that, right? If people are helping you out, set them as friendly. Or if you know, you're helping someone else out, ask them to set you as friendly so that things will push up. But you know, of course, if there's another association that's helping them more, it's more beneficial to set that association as friendly than yourself. Don't be greedy. What is best for the city? That's how you got to look at everything, guys. How can the city benefit the most? So that is our city le leveling overview. I hope you found that useful. Um, if you did, smash that like button. If you have tips, tricks that you want to share with everybody else, throw them down in the comments below. We can have some great discussions down there and just improve everybody's gameplay in Rail Nation because we want you to all do good. There's great lots of servers all over the place. We won't be competing all the time. It's all good. We want to learn together. And if you want to see more of this, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel for more updates of when our content goes live. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, all that fun stuff if you want to check us out. If you want to play some Rail Nation with us, um, we frequent the Rhino team. So right now we're on the Com 1 Rocky Mountain server. It's a USA scenario, um, but we're floating around. So throw a comment down below that you're interested and we can get you the link to join the Rhino associations and uh, the awesome team that we've got going. And thanks to our big boss, Rhino, who keeps everything going nicely there. So thank you guys very much for watching, and we hope to see you all next time. We want you to be part of the, one of the biggest cities in the game. So how do you go about doing that? First off, the important thing to know, leveling a city takes coordination. You need lots of players working together to benefit the city in order to pull ahead. So general overview, if we open the city here, here, that it doesn't drop below this stock line, which for me is at 4,690 tons. Each level that you go through as you level up, that will get a higher and higher number. The consumption amounts vary. It all depends on the good and how many connected people in your city are connected to that good. There are four required goods for the city, three when you first start, but as soon as a fourth one fills in, it stays four for the rest of the game. And the general rule of thumb is you want this red bar to fill up so that once it um, consumes at the end of its 15 minute cycle, you can see a little counter down at the bottom. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another BJ and Co. Rail Nation video. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about city leveling. Um, so you've got the intro, you know basics how the game works, you know what you should be prioritizing in era one. So now let's get your team up to number one with tons of variables so there's no easy way to compute it but basically you just want to keep pushing this bar up which means hauling 
these four goods to the city. Seems pretty simple, right? You just haul a bunch of them. Well, there's many things to take into account. Um, the goods themselves are all hauled from a different 